Hey guys, welcome to this session by IntelliPad. Microsoft Excel is the world's most popular spreadsheet program. As Microsoft Excel is compatible with both Windows and Mac operating system, it has a wide user base. Also, if you master Excel, it will help you a lot if your job involves in working with a lot of spreadsheets. And in this session, we'll be looking at some most important interview questions on Excel with detailed answers. So guys, before moving on with this session, please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. And also, if you want to do an end-to-end -end training on Microsoft Excel, IntelliPad provides a complete Microsoft Excel certification training and those details are available in the description. Now, let us continue with this session. So coming to the first Excel interview question, it's always going to be something like this. They're going to ask you to tell something you know about MS Excel. And uh, there are various ways you can go on to answer this, but the most simplistic and the most expected answer where uh, they check your depth of understanding is something like this. So MS Excel is an amazing tool which is primarily used for data analytics and to perform data validation across a spectrum of data. It has spreadsheets, it has a lot of workbooks and an amazingly put together user interface which helps a student or a professional go through the same and understand and churn through data very easily. So the second thing you need to know is that uh, data sets form a very vital uh, ingredient in the world of data science today. And most of these data sets are accessible, are generated and stored via a spreadsheet in the MS Excel format. So coming to question number two, it's going to be what are spreadsheets or, uh, you know, workbooks in MS Excel? Well, uh, you know, spreadsheets actually are a very organized form of uh, uh, presentation where data is stored in rows and columns and the data stored in these rows and columns can be manipulated as per the user's requirement. But then uh, they are mostly manipulated mathematically if uh, they are numbers, you know, like performing uh, arithmetic operations, mathematical functions, statistical techniques, and much more. Coming to question number three, what are the single blocks uh, in the spreadsheet called as? Well, a single block in the uh, spreadsheet is actually called as a cell, or in fact, they're called as a cell block as well. Let me quickly jump to Excel where we can check this out. For example, you can see all the single entities that are present here. Well, each of these are known as cells. And whatever you're seeing right now is just one sheet of the particular book. Well, a book can have more than one sheet and eventually we're going to get into that. But to create a new sheet, make sure to click the new sheet option and you can have any number of sheets that you desire. And again, each of these sheets will have the blank rows and columns where you can work with at any time of your choice. Coming to the question again. So I hope we're clear with our cells. Uh, question number four on the top interview list is, uh, can we add notes to a cell in MS Excel? If yes, can you show us how? Well, yes, notes can be added uh, to a particular uh, row or a particular column or in fact a particular cell as well. So basically, comments are added well, there is more than one person accessing or noting something down or it just might be one person as well. It just increases the readability and it makes sure uh, that, uh, you know, you can uh, collaborate with others easily and they can understand via the notes that you've put. Uh, putting a note is very simple in Excel, so let's check it out. So here I have a simple uh, cell which says notes example. It can have anything for that matter and I just have uh, picked up this for the sake of the question. All right. So to add a note to this, it's very simple. All you have to do is right click and click on insert comment. And uh, you can put in any comment such as, uh, you know, we are learning MS uh, Excel questions, right? And after that, pretty much you can click anywhere else and the note is stored. To access the note again, all you have to do is hover your mouse across that particular thing. And you can see a tiny red tab at the end of it, right? On the top right part of the cell here. Well. This particular thing denotes that there has been a comment made and by who uh, it's made as well. So admin, uh, pretty much that's the name of the machine that I'm working on right now. And uh, that's the access which I have. And uh, pretty much it will tell you what the comment is. We are learning MS Excel questions. So it is as simple as that. Coming back to the next question. Okay guys, a quick info. If you want to do an end-to-end -end Microsoft Excel training, IntelliPad provides a complete Microsoft Excel certification training and those details are available in the description. 
Now let us continue with this session. Question number five asks, can each cell be identified and used individually, uh, I mean independently? Well, yes, cells have something called as cell addresses, which basically help them to be used uniquely at any point of time. Again, let's dive back to Excel. Well, you can see the column names which start from A, they go all the way till V and pretty much there are lakhs and lakhs of rows as well. So each of these have actually an address through which you can access them. For example, if I place my mouse here at the first point of time, uh, I am addressing it via the column A and the row 1. Hence, this particular cell has an address called as A1, which you can see here. Uh, this has to be B1, this is going to be C1 because it's C and it's 1. So what is this going to be? I am hovering my mouse here, right? Can you guys uh, take a guess? It's under C, so it starts with C. It's the sixth row, so it's going to be C6, right? Let's take up another random one somewhere here, sure. So this one uh, is under L, this one is uh, in the 13th uh, row, so this is, this is going to be L13. I hope you guys got this. Coming back to the presentation. So, question number six. Can comments be added to a cell block if we need it? Guys, we just checked out how we can add notes, right? It is pretty much the exact same thing. Yes, Excel allows comments, right? We just checked how it can be done. And this is done to ensure that there is better visibility, there is higher readability and good collaboration among teams who are working on the same sheet. Coming to question number seven. How can we make use of relative addressing in Excel? Well, relative addressing is primarily used so that you can save a lot of time and eventually uh, perform repetitive tasks very, very quickly, which again saves time and time saved is time earned in the field of data analytics. So let's check out how we can go on to make sure uh, we can use relative addressing in MS Excel. So let me quickly uh, go on to create a field so I'm going to name this field as ID. Let me make the center line. All right. All right, guys, to so check out how relative addressing works in Excel, let's take a very simple example. For example, I have an, a column which says ID and I have one. Uh, for example, let's say I need two, I need a uh, three, four, five, all the way till 10. It's going to be cumbersome to manually do this. So what's the most simple way to do it? Let's uh, uh, use relative addressing. For example, if I want one to be added to every single element, I just say equal to a two plus one. And what this does is it just took one value, added it to the value which is present here and gave it to us, right? Now the fun part comes, if I just drag and drop this entirely, as you can see, it is going to keep adding one to every single uh, element. Again, I can add, I can just pick up random elements and I can start doing it as well. As you can see, every time that I am uh, doing it, it's pretty much picking up one number. So if I have to change this instead of one, let's add two to every element, right? As you can check out, as I changed one particular element, everything else changed because we added two here, right? Now, if we drag and drop again, everything should change uh, because this time two was added instead of one. And I hope you guys are clear with relative addressing. And this brings us to the next question, which is how can we insert new rows and new columns in MS Excel? Well, again, inserting columns and rows is uh, very easily done and it is hugely advantageous as well. So to do this, let's quickly check out in MS Excel. All right. So if we have to add a row here, Let's say above this, you need to select a cell which has to be below that. For example, if I right click here and I say insert a row, you can actually check where you have to shift the cells. So if I'm adding a row, then the sh cells get shifted down. As you could check, all the values uh, which were present are right there. But then we just got another free row where, you know, we can uh, work out, we can put something. For example, here we can type in, uh, you know, double digit numbers. I'm just giving you guys a fairly uh, simple example of how this is done. But then you could go on to do something just like this. All right. So again, if we have to add a column again, you can select anything, right click, insert and you can shift everything right. If that's the case, as you can see the value which was there got shifted right. And now we have an empty uh, spot in this particular row of the same column. And I hope this was clear to you as well. So this brings us to question number nine. Uh, can each of the cells in MS Excel be formatted if it is required? Well, yes, 
Excel supports a huge amount, a plethora of formatting options when it comes to working with each of the cells. This is done for customization purposes and this is done to make sure that there is better data visibility overall as well. So again, let me remove everything and we can consider a simple example. So I'm going to call this a uh, name. Let's have, uh, for example, age uh, or something. Uh, this is just for the example purpose. So uh, name, let me type in my name It's Anirudh. And again, if we need to do something, all we have to do is click on format cells and then we are here. Let's say we need to change the font to it. Let's say we just need a bold version of it. All I have to do is uh, click on bold and hit OK. And as you can see, it's done. Of course, all of these can be done from the shortcut uh, you see here. But then there are certain things which you cannot access right there. So uh, for example, let's say you want a strike through for some reason and you have a strike through as well. And there are n number of customization options that I've mentioned. So let's take out how we can work with a number. Again, format cells, we have number, there is various types. For example, the numbers can be actually a number place where you can have a decimal to be added to it. If it's a currency, there's dollar amount added, for example. Uh, you can have the date, you can have the time, percentage, and so much more. Since I just typed in this, it's showing me the percentage of it. So anyway, coming back to the next question. How can we customize the ribbon tab in MS Excel? Well, the ribbon tab is a godsend in my opinion when we're talking about MS Excel because it is extremely helpful by guiding a lot of users, novice to advance, to basically uh, give them a variety of options and a lot of tools as well. So let's dive back to MS Excel to check how we can do that. So uh, coming to MS Excel right now, this is what is called as the ribbon tab, the home insert page layout formulas, data review and view. So this particular tab is called as a ribbon tab because it gives you everything at a very convenient way. In case if you have to add anything to this ribbon tab which you particularly need or use a lot, all you have to do is right click on it and pretty much you can customize the quick access toolbar here as well. So you have save, undo, pretty much this is the top part of it. Uh, to customize the ribbon, all you have to do is come to the customize the ribbon part of it. And you can see, for example, if you want some developer options here, all you have to do is tick the developer options and then hit OK. And now as you can see, you have the developer options here too. And it is as simple as that. Coming to the 11th question. Uh, can you please show us how to freeze a panes in MS Excel? Again, freezing panes is a huge boon when you're working with a lot of, lots of data in multiple rows of the same columns. I'll show you what I mean. Let me quickly open up MS Excel again. For example, uh, let me just remove all of these columns. Let me type in uh, ID again. Uh, okay, so let's have ID. Uh, let's have age. And for ID again, we'll have one. Let's put in that same uh, formula we used that uh, time. All we're gonna do is drag and drop this for let's say 100 entries. Right. Even though this looks very simple and spartan to you, as I'm scrolling down, you cannot see what column name this is, right? For example, we just created this called as ID and we know it. But then when you're working with it, let's say you're entering this in the 100th or the 101st field and you have to add more than uh, one row of data, then you might not know what this column is, right? So to do this uh, very conveniently, just select the rows and go to view. In view, pretty much all you have to click on is freeze paints. In the freeze paints, you can freeze the top row. See, now the entirety of the top row is frozen. So if I keep scrolling down as well, the, the first one is always there as you can see. So you can see even though I'm, in the, I'm almost at the 100th entry, the first row uh, is pretty much there, the ID and the age. This makes it very convenient for all the developers out there to work with it. So anyway, coming back to the next question. Question number 12. How can we protect the workbooks in Excel? Well, Excel spreadsheets can actually be protected with a password. You know, each of the cells, rows, columns, and each of the sheets can also be logged based on the requirement as well. And data protection is actually a very vital tool and in fact, a very widely used tool in MS Excel. So anyway, checking that out. For example, if we have to lock uh, this particular cell, all you have to do is right click on it. Again, uh, you'll have to click on uh, format cells and here you have the protection tab that you need to click on. In the protection tab, you can either lock the cells and you can hide the cells as well. 
if I go on to click hide the cells, uh, pretty much as you can check it out. Well, this cells cannot be accessed without any privileges. But there is a small catch. If our workbook is unprotected, then in that case, this will not make any sense because anyone can actually access this. So to protect the workbook or protect the sheet, make sure you click on the review bar in the ribbon tab. And here you can actually protect your sheet, protect your workbook and everything else. For example, if you have to protect the workbook, you can give a password. Uh, let me type in a password and you can hit OK. We have to re-enter the password to make sure we entered it correct the first time because if you lose the password, then it becomes a problem. As soon as we protect the workbook, now this uh, workbook, the entirety of the workbook is actually protected. And if you have to remove the protection, all you have to do is click on it again and it's going to ask to unprotect the workbook. In that case, again, enter the password, hit OK, and your workbook is up. And your workbook is now unprotected. OK, guys, a quick info. If you want to do an end-to-end -end Microsoft Excel training, IntelliPad provides a complete Microsoft Excel certification training, and those details are available in the description. Now, let us continue with this session. So, coming back to question number 13. Can you please explain about pivot tables in Excel? Yes, pivot tables are one of the most widely used concept in MS Excel as well, because these are the tables which give out comprehensive details about the data present in the sheets. Well, uh, they are used to analyze the trends, patterns, relationships, and all of the other concepts with respect to data analysis in the data fields present in the MS Excel sheet. And at the end of the day, it also helps in creation of dashboards and reports. I hope I was clear with this. Coming to the next small concept in the same pivotal concept, which is the pivot charts. What are pivot charts? Well, pivot charts are actually used in accordance with uh, pivot tables to basically visualize them. The visualization ensures that we have nice looking graphs where the data can be visualized and in fact analyzed uh, in a very uh, beautiful manner. The visualization actually adds a lot of weight when it comes to the inside because it makes the graph more readable, more presentable and more pleasant to look at. And this in turn makes it very easy to interact with the data. Coming to question number 15. How can we uh, format multiple sheets at once in MS Excel? This again is something very important and something very nice that MS Excel provides to us. It is actually very vital to do that because it saves a lot of time and it helps if there is a lot of redundancy as well. So let's check it out. So coming back to MS Excel, if we do have to copy uh, the formatting present from one sheet to all of the other, all I have to do is select the cells that I want to uh, do the changes to and right click on the sheet name and select, select all sheets. And after this, we can go on to add, for example, if we need a fill color uh, to the columns, as you can see, I just added a fill color. Again, going to sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4, as you can see, uh, pretty much all of that has been added with just one single click. Uh, let me just control Z so we can go back. And now you can see uh, pretty much none of the sheets have been affected, right? So it is as simple as this to add uh, formatting to all the sheets at one single point of time. Anyway, so coming to the next question, how can you protect cells from being copied? Well, as we discussed, you know, protecting cells can actually help in hiding the formulas and ensuring that there is no unauthorized changes to the sheets and that not everyone can see the formulas which are actually present in the working of the sheet. Well, the advantage is because this is needed sometimes where there is uh, some requirement of abstraction and data hiding, which is required to ensure that not everyone has the access to a calculation which is being performed. If that's the case, we can go on to protect all the cells just like we saw. Coming to question number 17. Can you implement named ranges in Excel? Yes, named ranges are again another amazing feature uh, which is pretty much given to us by the people at Microsoft where again it ensures that we have amazing readability and that common tasks can be done very easily and quickly as well. So let us check it out with an example. So here we are in MS Excel. I have a basic ID column uh, with a formula applied to it where we're basically adding two to every single number one after the other. To go on to add name ranges in Excel, it's very simple. All you need to do is select all the rows and the columns that you need to go on to add the name ranges and you can put in uh, the name you want. 
for example i just name this as ids so uh, if i have to go check out the named range of my id all i have to do is click here it says ids and it selects all the ids for me if i have to do it for age uh, let's say uh, there's 12 let's uh, put in a uh, random ages here just for the sake of the example and if i have to select all the data all the ages again i select this and i create a named range and i call it ages and now as you can check out there are two named ranges or if i select the ids all the ids are selected if i select the ages then all the ages are selected you can choose to either use the column header or not in case if it's a mathematical operation you would avoid uh, using the column name and i hope i'm clear with this coming to the next question uh, can you please tell us something about the functions in ms excel well this is going to be a guarantee question in any ms excel interview because again functions are the foundation of microsoft excel because they are used to perform almost any task uh, you know which might be otherwise difficult to actually do manually you know there are a lot of functions as aggregation functions like you know sum average maximum of a number range minimum of a number range and much more and in fact these are the popular ones and again make sure to mention that there are many types of function in ms excel and after that pretty much they can find out if you can actually use any one of this functions so the next question is can you demonstrate the use of any function in excel so uh, make sure that you can uh, use a simple function such as sum or sum if to show a basic operation you know any function can actually be chosen based on how advanced the role is that you are actually applying for but in this particular case to keep it to the discussion of all the viewers let us take a simple example so if we have to use a sum function it is pretty simple so let's say we need the sum of all the ids that are present here or sum of all the ages as well right so to start out with the formula it always starts with an equal to sign so let's say equal to and we need to perform the sum operation so let's say sum open the parentheses and you can see in fact the syntax right there it shows you a uh, what number uh, uh, you want to basically do a sum of but then let's say we want the sum of all of this right so uh, let's see the address of this cell it's an a2 so i say a2 and i add a colon so colon denotes a range of values from a2 i want all the sum till a11 so if i type this close the parenthesis and hit enter i have the value 100 100 is basically the sum of all the values present from a2 all the way till a11 again if we have to do it for each uh, we start with is equal to Uh, sum of everything that starts from C three all the way till C six, and I close the parentheses. I hit enter. It's one twenty two. It is as simple as this, and it is very vital that you demonstrate this. Coming to the twentieth question. Uh, can you show us how to find compound interest in ms excel well this is a very interesting question and most of the time it is asked because ms excel has a function called as the fv function or the future value function which is actually used to calculate compound interest very easily so let's check it out All right here is a sample sheet that i have created in ms excel to check out the use of the future value function so basically the future value function has a lot of parameters that you need to check so to add it let us type equal to f v and here uh, as soon as i open the brackets you can see there are multiple options for the future uh, value function right there is a rate there is n per there is pmt pv types and much more so basically the rate argument is telling us what is the interest rate uh, for that period for example in our case it's 5% so nper is basically telling the number of uh, payment periods and then we have pmt which is basically the short form for payment and this is the payment which is actually made after the each period has been crossed right so this has to be entered as a negative number because you will be giving money away and then coming to pv and uh, the type basically pv and the type are given in square brackets because these are optional arguments 
PV is just the present value of your future payments and type basically says if uh, there is a due uh, at the end of your payment or not. It, if it's zero, it means it's the end of the period, there's a due and if, it, if it's one, it means there is a due at the beginning of the period. Basically, the default setting here is always zero. Anyway, coming back to here. So basically to find the compound interest, all we need to do is we need to go on to dividing the interest rate uh, with the term in years first. So the interest rate is at uh, C6. So we need to divide C6 by C8 first as the uh, first argument. And then after this, uh, we need to multiply our C7, which is the particular term in years with respect to our compounding period because this is how many times the value gets compounded every single year. And after this, as I mentioned, the value default value is going to be zero. And we're going to have to give the negative value because that is the amount which is being taken from us. So the present value is $1,000. So I'm going to type in minus C5, which is basically uh, subtracting the present value, which is 1000. And as soon as I hit enter here, it's going to give us a calculation, which is 1647. $0.01. And as you can check out, this is going to be the compounded value of an investment of $1,000 uh, in 10 years, guys. This is the final future value that you're going to obtain. Okay, guys, a quick info. If you want to do an end-to-end -end Microsoft Excel training, IntelliPad provides a complete Microsoft Excel certification training and those details are available in the description. Now let us continue with this session. And anyway, coming back to the next question, I hope I was clear with the previous one. So the next question is, what are the type of functions that are actually present in MS Excel? Well, again, there are numerous types of functions which are present in MS Excel. Everything from mathematical functions, date and time functions, financial functions, logical functions, database functions, you name it, it is there. But then these are the most popular ones used. And in fact, these days, all the statistical functions are being used for various reasons because this entire world has become a big data problem. And to go on to uh, analyze that and to perform very good analytics on the same, MS Excel is in fact a very good tool. So to quickly demonstrate all the functions that are available, click on the formulas tab and pretty much you can hit uh, more functions here. As you can check out, you have so many formulas that you can go on to use. Uh, you can just click on the insert function on the left as well. And you can check out the type of the function. Let's say if you want to check out all the functions, you have absolute functions. Uh, you know, there are, there are, you have average functions. You have so many functions. Uh, there is financial functions again, which is a couple of, which is used for accounting, uh, financial rates to find the nominal part of a number and whatnot. Then you have math functions and again, to uh, find out uh, trigonometric functions, to, uh, to convert degrees into radians, to find out the log of a number, to find the modulus of a number, odd numbers, even numbers, and much more. You have statistical functions, again, to find out uh, the confidence interval, the normalization of the uh, confidence values, and much more. And you have text functions, you have database functions. Guys, I hope you get the point here. There are multiple functions that MS Excel supports, and you can use all of these as per your requirement. Coming to 22nd. Uh, can you explain uh, one example where you have used averages? Well, again, it is actually very simple to go on to do this. Many people actually tend to do this manually. But again, to save a lot of time, you have a function called as the average function, which does exactly this. So for example, let me create another set of values here. So uh, let's say I have uh, uh, one here. Uh, let us take up the same example is equal to uh, f5 plus 3. As you can see, one added with three gives us four. Let's try to drag this down a little and we have a couple of values here, right? So to find the average of all of these values, let me name this average. I can make this bold. So again, to find the average, as I told you, there, are, there is an average function that you can use is equal to average is the keyword. And then again, you can give out a couple of numbers out here, a set of numbers, or in fact, a range of numbers. Since we're using a range of numbers, let's uh, work from F5, uh, uh, which is the first number. Uh, we have a colon, which denotes the range all the way till F14. And as soon as I hit this and hit enter, we have 14.5. So 14.5 is average of all of these numbers that you can see. I hope I was clear with this. Coming to the 23rd question is, can you talk about formula precedence in MS Excel? Yes, MS Excel follows the board mass rule. The board mass rule 
Uh, the B in the board mass rule stands for brackets, O stands for order, D stands for division, M stands for multiplication, A stands for addition and S stands for subtraction. The rule works from left to right and the precedence is given in such a way. Let me explain with an example and you should too. So, uh, let us take up uh, 3, 5 and 7 here. Alright, so we can uh, remove all the other values in fact. So, I have 3 values on your screen right now. 3, uh, 5 and uh, 7 as you can see here. So, let us uh, have a formula uh, which pretty much uses the precedence. So, let's say is equal to H5. Uh, plus in the brackets we can have uh, i5 into uh, j5 right so the value of this if we manually calculate it we can understand it is 38 and here the precedence has been followed again as you can see uh, when we multiplied uh, the value pretty much it went on to multiply the value in the bracket first because b comes first and then it added to the value right because again if we do it in the different way we'll get a different answer for example let's say uh, we multiply these two values we get 15 and if we add 15 to 7 we do not get 38 and in fact if we go on to use uh, the same uh, incorrect rule that i just told you 5 into 3 plus 7 well, it is correct if we do not make use of the bracket, but since we make use of the bracket, we need to be aware that it is using the baud mass rule, right? So these two numbers are getting multiplied first and then this number is getting added to it. Well, if there weren't any brackets, uh, you know, pretty much H5 would have been added with I5 and then it would have been multiplied, which would not uh, give the value of 38. And again, 38 is the correct value out here. This is how a, a very simple example can be shown on how precedence works. And then coming to the 24th question, the 24th question asks, can we display the current date and in fact even the current time in MS Excel? Well, yes, it is actually possible and the easiest way to do uh, it is to actually use a function to fetch the current date and the function is called as the today function. The today function basically returns the current date in the date format in the MS Excel sheet. Well, let's quickly check it out. So let's say I want to print uh, my date here. So all I have to do is equal to today and I put in the parenthesis because it's a function I hit enter and as you can check out so today's date is the 6th of February 2020 at the time of the recording of this particular video and hence you can check out it is already formatted to be the date as well so coming to the 25th question it is can you give us an example of how to use percentage in excel Guys, we have already checked this out, but then I'm going to give you another example because making use of percentages are extremely vital uh, in the field of uh, data analytics and in fact in the field of making use of Excel in an advanced way as well. So let's have 10, let's have 50 and let's have 80. Let's consider these to be marks obtained and next we can have total marks. So let's say these are the marks obtained uh, by some students in the class. This is just for an example, right? So uh, the total marks is going to be 100 for everyone, obviously. And again, all you can do is pretty much drag and drop this and you can save time instead of manually entering as well. So to uh, find out the value here, again, you don't have to do it manually is equal to D5 uh, divided by E5. And this is going to give you a value of 0.1. Let me drag and drop the same. And in fact, now you can actually select all these numbers, right click, format cell, the number category, and here you have percentage. Here you can actually choose if you need decimal places or not. Let's say we do not need decimal places, I'll bring it to zero. And if I hit OK, you can check that this person got 10%, this person got 50% and the other person got as 80%, right? If you change this, the value will actually change. So let's say we have 13 here. As you can see, the value changed automatically. Uh, let's say this person obtained 50.5, but then we'll have 51 because it's being rounded off. But then if we do not need it to round off, you can have the decimal places to be shown. As you can see, 50.5%. So this is a very simple way to go on to use percentages in MS Excel. This brings us to question number six. Question number six, what are the various uh, report formats in MS Excel? Well guys, you need to know that there are three report formats in MS Excel that you can put out. One is the tabular report, the other is the compact report, and then we have the general report as well. 
So make sure you, you answer this question very diligently by taking all the three types of the report formats that are existent, compact reports, general reports, and tabular reports. And this brings us to question number 27. Question number 27 asks, how can you explain a VLOOKUP in MS Excel? Well, VLOOKUP is again another very interesting function that is basically present in Excel, which helps to fetch values uh, which are actually placed vertically in the columns. So uh, when you think about the name VLOOKUP, the V in VLOOKUP actually stands for vertical and VLOOKUP is actually used when there is a lot of data which needs handling and this again makes life very simple for an Excel developer. Coming to question number 28, what is the main use of macros in MS Excel? Macros, as the name suggests, is basically a simple set of instructions which can be recorded by users. So why do we need to record any instructions? Why can't we do all these instructions every single time? Guys, there might be certain repetitive tasks which need to be done again and again iteratively and this can get cumbersome, waste a lot of time and in fact demotivate a human being who's doing the repetitive task. So macros step in here. Macros are used to reduce redundancy on a big scale and this is actually used primarily to create a, a, a set of automated instructions which can run on repeated instructions and in fact on functions as well. This brings us to question number 29. Name any two or three best practices to use always when working with MS Excel. Well, here is how you can answer it. Here are four best practices in fact. So if they've asked for two or three, make sure you give one extra to, to show the interviewer that you might know more than two or three. Well. The first one is to create multiple tabs while working. Instead of working on a single sheet, it is always recommended you have multiple sheets that you work with to ensure that there is less error rates and better visibility. And the second thing is to add a table of content when you have a lot of data to ensure that your data is always structured or looks structured at least. And then aggressively commenting makes sure that uh, you or anyone else in the team working on this particular aspect, this particular sheet or this workbook has an idea idea of what's going on with respect to each particular cell which is important in that particular sheet. And then coming to good visualizations, good visualizations are very very important because it is at the, at the end of the day it is very easy to create a simple graph but it can be a challenge to create a very good looking table. So having the skills, having the required designing skills to make sure you can make a graph look good is extremely vital. And this brings us to the last question in our top Excel interview series. So the last question is, what is the shortcut to show syntax of functions? Well, the syntax is actually shown in a very convenient way while inserting the function itself as we went through, right? But why is this done? Why does Excel show this to us? Well, it is actually done to ensure that the person uses the correct syntax when inputting the parameters because it is very easy to input the wrong parameters and have the wrong results. So let me dive back to Excel here. And as you can pretty much check out, uh, let me use a simple function again. So again, coming back to the future value example, as soon as I hit FV and I open the brackets, you can see the parameters which are uh, shown here so that the user can always look at this while entering the values in case if the person is using the function for the first time. So there's another way to do this. You can click on insert function in the formulas tab and pretty much you can go on to search for the function here as well. So if we need the FV, uh, we can have to uh, scroll down and click on FV. Again, it tells you what the future value function does as well. So it's basically future value of an investment based on the periodic constant payments and the constant interest rate as well. So if you click OK here, it adds that and you can add the rate NPM PMT. It's in bold because as I've mentioned, these are the compulsory values and PV and type are optional numbers. And pretty much it will tell you what uh, each of the columns uh, actually be put as well. For example, there's the interest rate and this is the total number of payment periods as I mentioned and PMT is basically the payment made in every single period and you can see it is conveniently shown in MS Excel. So just like this, there are multiple ways MS Excel makes life easier and in fact working with MS Excel is considered to be a very good advantage for a person looking out to increase his skills in MS Excel or in fact looking out for a data analyst job and more. So you've reached the end of this section. I wish you all the best for the interviews that you're going to attend and make sure to revise all of these questions thoroughly. Okay guys, a quick info. 
If you want to do an end-to-end -end Microsoft Excel training, IntelliPad provides a complete Microsoft Excel certification training and those details are available in the description. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this session. I hope this session on Excel interview questions was helpful and informative for you. If you have any queries regarding this session, please leave a comment below and we'll love to help you out. Thank you.